begin finding in your Bibles the third chapter of the book of Acts. And my subject today, my topic today is hope for the hurting. Hope for the hurting. We are living in a broken world. Uh, as a result, people are broken. People like you and me. Because we're all broken. All of us. We're all in on brokenness. Um, physically, emotionally, relationally, morally, spiritually, every person born is broken. And as a result of this brokenness comes pain and suffering and often shame. This is the reason that so many today are living in depression and despair, anxiety, fear. As Thoreau said years ago, men lead lives of quiet desperation. And the shame often of this suffering and this pain and this brokenness often uh, produces a cover-up because we tend to hide our hurts. We tend to stuff our sin and our shame. Or we try to help ourselves. This is why self-help industry is a major industry. There are always people who will sell you solutions to all of your problems and all of your pain. Sometimes we get engaged in just more and more activity to cover up the hurt. We rush around here and there. Uh, America is the only country in the world that has even a mountain called Mount Rushmore. And so we think if we just go more and do more and rush more and get more engagement and activity in our lives that we, can, we, can, we don't have to listen to the hurt and the pain. Until we run out of hope, until the world's solutions don't provide what we so desperately need, which is hope in Jesus Christ. You cannot buy this hope. Uh, science cannot provide hope. Help, but not hope. Government can provide hope, especially when it's shut down. <laughs> hope is not just a political slogan or promise. Politics can't provide hope. Material possessions, technology. Hope is in Jesus and Jesus only. Jesus is the only hope, the only answer, the only solution to the hopelessness that we all experience in life. You cannot live without hope. When hope is gone, life is gone. So that's why I'm so excited in today's message to be a messenger of hope to speak to you of, of the reason of our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the scripture tells us that in him, in Christ, we have a future and a hope. The good news of Jesus Christ is that he can and will restore lives and restore souls. And it's all found in this magnificent story in the third chapter of the book of Acts. Before we get to our story, let me remind you of what's happening in Jerusalem in these days. The Spirit of God fell upon His people, just a few, 120 who had gathered in an upper room waiting, as Jesus said, commanded them for the promise that would come, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the promise came, the Spirit of God came, baptized them with fire, and they ignited. Symbolically, literally on top of their head, it appeared that there were tongues of fire the mighty rushing wind blew them into the community. The fire was now spreading and the church is forming and the fellowship was, was igniting and uniting. One of the common characteristics you see of the church in the early days was uh, the, the togetherness. They were all in all the time. Over and over we read words in the book of Acts like they were together or they were all one or they were in one place. So the church was together and they were together in the gospel, sharing faith in Jesus Christ and they were being the church and, and that meant getting into the community daily from house to house and in the temple they were proclaiming. They didn't stop proclaiming Jesus Christ and as a result uh, 
the, the, as a result, people were being just, just born into the family of God daily. Ultimately, they filled the entire city of Jerusalem with the message of Jesus Christ and then went into the world and turned the world upside down. We want to be that kind of church. A church ignited and united in the mission of Christ, where thousands of people are coming to faith in Christ and discovering hope that is in Jesus. So massive numbers of people were hearing about Jesus, receiving him, repenting of their sins, and being born again. But of all the thousands of people that were being saved, Luke, the doctor, the author of the book of Acts, chooses one prime example of someone who came to Jesus. Because remember, of all these people coming to Christ, these are real people with real stories, backstories to their lives. And he chooses this one particular man. Indeed, it's a, it's a dramatic story, but it stands out of the miraculous power of Jesus Christ, how Jesus dramatically rescues us, regardless of our spiritual condition. Well, let's read his story beginning in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate. Now the beautiful gate A remnant of it still stands in Israel today. You can see it when you go, and it's the Eastern Gate. In the day of Christ, in the day of the apostles, it was a dazzling, uh, ornate Corinthian columns, uh, brass, bronze, and when the Eastern sun would rise, it would just dazzle like a like a beautiful morning in the fall in Texas. It's just just a beautiful sight. This beautiful gate. It was so magnificent. They named it beautiful. And so here's a man like others who is there at the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple on their way to temple, to the temple. So look at verse three, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms and Peter directed his gaze at him as did John and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise.